everyone, welcome to Colour with Claire. First of all, I'm just going to apologise for my voice if it gets a bit croaky. I've had a cold this last week and my throat's still not right. Um, anyway, let's get on with it. So what I'm doing today is I'm making a tutorial for this lightning gem, which I was just doodling on an envelope, just messing around. And I was thinking about the cracks in gemstones that look a bit like lightning bolts. And it just got me messing around trying to create a lightning gem. Now this is obviously not a real gemstone it's not very realistic in that way but it looks pretty cool and I thought you might like to see how to do it so I'm going to be using Prisma colors today just four different colors we've got the PC 132 which is the dioxazine purple hue we've got violet which is PC 932 mulberry PC 995 and lemon yellow PC 915 Obviously you'll need a black pen to do your setting. I'm using a Spectrum Noir Art Liner in size 3. And a white gel pen for your highlights. Okay, so first of all... Oh, everything's falling on me. First of all, I'm just going to draw the uh, setting for the gem. Now I cheat because I've got a very, very... Not a steady hand, basically. <laughs> I'm very shaky, so I, I'm not steady at all. So I use one of these templates. And I'm just going to do a smaller circle inside. Let's see, a larger circle here. There we go, that'll do. Not very precise, and I'm not... Um, an expert by any means it's just something I was messing about with earlier okay so first what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our lemon yellow is really sharp and then we're just going to draw in our lightning cracks now this is going to be different for everybody that does it you don't have to follow the exact pattern of cracks that I'm doing uh, I'm just going to make them all come off this initial stem here, I think. So we're going to have a few quite long ones, and then we're going to have some narrow little ones just coming off it in different places. So obviously you don't have to be precise with it just do some wiggly lines basically that look a bit like lightning I think that's enough yep so you might want to make the lines a little bit thicker in places and a bit narrower in other places just to give it a bit of a bit of difference really we don't want it to look exactly the same everywhere Now you get your next lightest colour which is the mulberry and using very very light layers we're just going to go all the way around the outline of the lightning that we've just done. Now it doesn't matter if you go over the yellow, for a start it provides a bit of a resist against other colours anyway and we're also going to come back in and just touch it up later so it doesn't matter. So we're just doing an outline of all of our yellow, very very lightly, I'm barely pressing at all on the pencil. And the basic thing about this gem is just layering and layering, come back in, put another layer on, come back in, put another layer on until it looks like the finished product. So this mulberry around the lightning is supposed to be, when lightning strikes it lights up the whole sky and obviously the closest part to the actual lightning bolt is the lightest part. So we're going to be doing um, like a dark, dark sky but with purple tones in it and this will just be the glow around 
the lightning if that makes sense. I'm, I'm so doped upon cold medication I'm probably not making sense <laughs> but yeah. So once you've done one layer around your lightning we then go in with the next colour which is violet and again just going around the mulberry what we've just laid down blending it in a little bit still keeping the layer very very light So the mulberry, the violet and the dioxane purple hue really blend well together which is great for this but obviously yellow doesn't blend into pink incredibly well especially when it's this purpley type of pink but we'll sort that out later. Okay and then you get your dioxane purple hue. And again, just overlapping the violet a little bit and colouring the rest in. So we've got a rough sort of look of what it's going to look like when it's finished. And we've placed the colours roughly where they're going to blend together. So we put in, <coughs> excuse me, put in the darkest colour around the edge, obviously deepens the edges so it looks sort of like a round cabochon and that's the look that we're going for. If you love doing gems and this is maybe one of the first videos you might have come across please go and check out Vitruvian Art on YouTube. Amanda does the most amazing gem videos. She is incredibly talented and she makes it all really easy for the beginner as well. Um, and they're all quite short videos, they're like 20 minutes, so it's not going to take you an age to produce something really, really professional. Okay, so we've done our first layer of colours. <coughs> Next, we're sort of going back on ourselves, so we go to violet and go over it again. So we're going to do this a few times until we get the look that we want. Adding layers like this just means that it blends really easily and builds up easily rather than just using heavy pressure and it just looks a bit disjointed. Don't worry if you go over the lines, you can touch that up with a white gel pen or you can just go over it in silver like I normally do. <laughs> silver gel pen because that hides any imperfections. And then the mulberry. So obviously I'm not a gem professional or anything like that. I'm more of a copier than a creator <laughs> when it comes to making new things. I'm pretty good at colouring, but that's other people's artwork that they've um, that they've drawn and I can colour it in, but I'm not very good at sort of creating my own artwork. But we try. So we're going back down with the violet, as you can see it's starting to look a bit brighter now, the mulberry is starting to look glowy around the lightning which is what we want.
dioxane. go really hard with this around the edge because we want to make sure that the edges do turn away from us. Just make sure that it's not a hard line around the edge that you can distinct, that looks distinct from the next colour. Um, we don't really want to distinguish any lines. It needs to look really smooth and yeah. So again, down with the violet. This is probably going to be the last layer now. That violet is blurring the line of the dioxane that we've just put down and then we'll use the Marlboro to blur the line of the violet and that's just how the process of doing it. So you can always use the next lightest colour <coughs> to blend and blur the line of the previous colour that you've just put down. You just have to get um, lighter with your strokes as you come to that next colour. And then the mulberry. I'm just going to sharpen this up a little bit. Make sure I'm still on screen. Yep. So I'm sort of buffing the edge here of the violet and making sure that we've got no white tooth visible as well on the mulberry. Now if you've maybe done some of your lightning strikes uh, too thick and you want to narrow those out a bit, you can do that at this point with the mulberry. For instance like that, just go a little bit harder and it will cover the yellow. Obviously you can do this with different colours as well, you could do it with blues, indigos, that would look really nice. Anything that's quite a dark colour really, blue, purple, you could probably do it with green as well, a dark, dark green. But obviously we're trying to create the look of the sky. This is more I suppose of a fantasy sky because we don't have purple skies unfortunately, but then again Sometimes you get funny colours in the sky and yeah, especially on storms and things. Right, okay, so I've done all the mulberry, <coughs> now I'm just going to go over our lightning again with a sharp pencil, sharp yellow, just so that we can redefine that line and make sure the colour really does stand out. Because as you can see, I've gone over it with the mulberry a little bit. Please don't do that with your hand. I do it all the time and it just smudges and sm smudges. I need to get some sort of artist dust brush. But um, mostly I just blow it or wipe it and then I have to erase all the smudges. It's 
Prismacolors are quite good in the way that because they're so waxy, um, you can, using heavy pressure, you can just move the wax around sometimes a little bit. So if you've got any more that's on your yellow, if you just press quite hard, it will sort of erase and replace it. And you can move it to the side almost. Now when you start filling in the yellow, you might notice that the edges with the mulberry looks quite blurred and that's totally fine because it's just supposed to indicate a glow around it. You might have to keep sharpening up just to keep that crisp nib. Prismacolors just crumble anyway, but just do your best. I've got a Prismacolor Polychromo comparison chart on my blog, which I'll put a link to in the description. So if you only have polychromos, you can um, look at that chart and decide which colors match best with the ones I've used today. Sometimes people only have one set and then there'll be tutorials for a different set and you don't know which colors are which. So yeah, that chart's really good for that. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the, the basic thing now. Um, there's not much left to do, but I'm just gonna take a colorless blender, my little mini one, <laughs> and just buff those lightning edges a little bit so they don't look extremely crisp at the edge. And this also helps with the glowy effect as well. You'll be touching this up in your own way um, when you do yours. When I follow tutorials on YouTube, I often end up pausing it right at the end for a while just while I make it look how I want it to look, touch it up. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that, I think. So now for the highlight, I use a Uniball Sino broad tipped white gel pen and um, sometimes before you first use the gel pen you sort of have to start it off a little bit so I just use a little scrap piece of paper to make sure the ink's flowing and then following the curve of the circle just make this wedge shape tapers off to a point and then I usually put a little dot at the end because I like that and then here I'm going to do exactly the same thing just mirrored it's quite hard to do this angle with the camera but do. Now if you do your highlights and you notice that maybe it goes a bit purple on the white you can always come back and go over it again to make it a bit whiter. You can do your highlights wherever you want just make sure that it follows the curve of the stone. And if you do mess up, wait for it to dry and use your colourless blender to sort of scratch around it and make it a bit more um, rounded. For instance, this here has gone to a little bit of a point, so I'll just be 
using this to round it off a little bit. I don't think it's quite dry. Let's have a go. Maybe I'll get rid of that end bit and just make it a bit more in line because I think it's coming in too much here. But anyway, that's the basic gist of the lightning gem. As you can see, looks pretty good. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and do also show me your gems as well. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.